Hello and welcome to a series of videos which I'm calling Python Challenges. The idea being in these videos I'm going to set a programming task for you to try and then I'll show you how to do it. So I'll show you the solution and I'll do it myself. The idea being if you're learning programming really you can't properly learn the skill of Python, the skill of programming without practicing it yourself and so these are meant to give you another opportunity to practice skills. In this mini series they'll get progressively harder or that is the idea at least um, hopefully it will provide some challenge for you but right now we're just doing a really simple chatbot in this video because I want to just practice some fairly well the, the kind of most basic skills you learn when you're doing programming so printing, dealing with user input, assigning variables and doing some basic arithmetic calculations these challenge videos are made in support of a set of tutorials I made on Python which will be a link to that playlist in the description if you're are not aware of it, I imagine most people watching this are in that playlist because I'll intersperse the tutorials with these challenges because really it's important to practice what you're learning. At the end of each of these videos, I have these tutorial videos, I have got a what I call a try now exercise, but they'll tend to be a little bit shorter than these challenge videos and also uh, try now is our for that video, these sort of these challenges are going to span a few videos at least. So in this case, there are five videos which cover the content needed for this. So right now we're going to start by creating what I'm calling a simple chatbot. So a chatbot is a program where you can interact as a user with the program in some capacity. So this could just be like a parrot repeating stuff back at you. They can be quite clever. I mean, nowadays we have things like Alexa and Siri. Apparently this logo on the left is for Siri, where we have a much more interactive experience. You know, you can ask them pretty much anything and they can reply with what seems like a customized message to you. But they rely on loads of complicated things like natural language processing, machine learning, and they draw on data from loads of different sources. Right now we're just ha having effectively like a parrot, it's just repeating stuff back, because I want to be able to create a simple chatbot program where the user can have a basic conversation with the program, the user is going to be asked questions, and the computer is going to be able to respond using their answer, making it slightly interactive. So it's not quite interactive in the same way as Alexa or Siri would be, but we can do something like this where in blue we have the computer's output and in black we have the input. So first of all, what is your name is being asked. The user types in Guido, presses enter, and Guido is used in the following output from a computer. So the actual input from a user is being used along in the program. So it does make it a little bit interactive and it allows us to try out a few different skills like basic maths because we can also ask some maths questions. So it can become a bit like a quiz if you want it to. And of course you can expand this if you want to, make it more impressive if you know more Python. Uh, but, you know, that'll do for right now, assuming you are just beginning. So to help you, to help guide you towards how we can solve this, and really, you know, if you, the goal here is not to create a chatbot you can sell for loads of money to Apple or Amazon. The goal is to practice the skills. And so here are some success criteria which will, if you hit each of these bullet points will mean you've created a good program. So I want it to be at least eight lines of code. We want to be able to use print statements, input statements, use variables, preferably more than one. Have some comments which explain the code, that's really important, it's a good habit to get into. And try and use some non-string data types, so numbers, and we can use those numbers and integers and floats in arithmetic operations. So doing the more advanced ones like modulo or exponentiation would be really good as well. So. I'd really recommend now you pause the video either on this slide or the previous slide to understand the task. Have a go at it yourself, it shouldn't take too long. And then right now I'll show you uh, a solution. Of course, your solution doesn't need to match mine totally. We want to have a bit of variety, but if you try and hit these criteria, that would be perfect. So I'm, I've copied and pasted them in here so I can keep track of what I'm doing, but I don't want these to be part of my program. So if I run it, I'll get an error because these are, this is not valid uh, Python code. I've got invalid syntax. And so if I want to get rid of this and make sure, well not get rid of it, but make sure it's not being run by the computer, I can surround it in triple quotes. I may not have shown this in a video actually yet, but a triple quote is like a multi-line comment. And so a single comment is just a line of code which doesn't ever get run by the computer, it allows us to explain our code, it allows us to jot stuff down, maybe do a bit of debugging to uh, get rid of a line if you want to keep it but not actually run it. Uh, but it doesn't work over multiple lines, so that is a nice trick. Okay, so minimum eight lines of code, we can sort of uh, just do that eventually. 
first of all, let's do a print statement. So if I start us off by doing something similar to the example I showed, I could just do print hello. Maybe we do hello, how are you? And so what I'm doing, print is a built-in function to Python. I won't explain all of this stuff all over again, um, like I did in the tutorials. We have print, we have our brackets, and we supply some data in these. And the way print works is anything inside the brackets will get shown to the user on the screen. And I should say this program is going to be just over a command line, so just text, something like Siri, something like um, Alexa can be done over voice as well, not only text. Okay, so that's fine, that's our program, it's not a very, uh, it's not interactive at all. I'm running it, it ends, and that's it. It's only one line. So, we want to be able to get some input from the user. So what I can do is now use input, print is for output, input is for input. And, well we can just, we can just have input like this, and if I assign it to a variable, so if I do, uh, we could just call this one intro, it's a good idea to try and give your variables names which aren't random, uh, but it's a little bit hard to, to name that one because I want here just a reply. So if I now run this, we're still gonna get hello, how are you? But now there's a prompt here for me to, as a user, type something in. So I can type in, I'm good, thanks. Press enter, now our program ends. So we've still got some work to do here. But what's happening is this value I'm typing in, I'm good, thanks, is being saved under the name intro. And so I can use intro later in my program to refer to that value, so it's being temporarily saved. Once this program ends, that value is lost. Maybe as an attempt to make this interactive, we can print again and print something like, um, or we could try and use the user's answer. So if I now, instead of putting quotes, because quotes make it a string, so some text data, uh, essentially, uh, if I now type it intro inside these brackets, I can just repeat this back to the user of it. I wanna add something onto this. So what I can do is follow this reference of my variable with a comma and this allows me to then supply some text data after it so if I do um, what can we do in fact let's let's do it just before intro because if I say instead of saying I'm good thanks so we said hello how are you and I just said I'm well we could do we could get the computer to say I'm also and then repeat back whatever the user said so if I add that comma to separate it because we're dealing here um, because we, we yeah, it's just it, it's a way we can separate it. Because what will happen if I just do, uh, I'll just do I'm all right this time. I'm also I'm all right. A bit, a bit silly, uh, but it does the job of repeating back uh, to the user. So this comma is being replaced is re in this line. The comma is being replaced by a a space. A space a space character is a character. I could also. Uh, do a plus instead for concatenation is one of our operators but um, I can I, I want to make sure I add a space because otherwise it's just going to be joined together so if I do I'm okay or not I'm also I'm O uh, we've got no gap between also and I'm so comma in print is quite useful for that purpose Let's now try and hit our use of non-string data types and have a little practice with this. By now, maybe asking about age. In Python, we have two numerical data types. We have integers and strings. Uh, in, <laughs> integers and floats, not strings. Strings are for text. But we can also have numbers as text, uh, just not treated as the same thing as integers or floats. So you can see in the third line, I've left the insides of these brackets empty, which you can do, but also, you can put text inside this in the form of a string, inside the quotes, and it is a bit like, it, it's called sort of wrapping a print statement inside the input statement, because anything I type in between the brackets will get shown to the user in the same way the print will. So if I now do, uh, we could do, what is your age? And then I can make this interactive by, maybe we are wanting to upstage uh, our user, and we could just say, we could say my age is 10 years plus your age maybe just a sort of practice so we could do uh, my age is and then we could again reference this variable so we could do age and now use plus 10 so I've got this arithmetic operation a simple one we're just adding a number to another number and that will be fine for now except it won't quite be fine I mean firstly I've added a space here we know that this uh, we know this comma is gonna add a space for us, like it did up uh, in line four. But also, we're gonna come across an issue here which you may well have come across as well if you've tried this. 
Let's just do I'm okay as well, spell it properly this time. I'm also I'm okay. What is your age? Well, if I do I am 25, we're going to get an error because it says type error can only concatenate string, not integer to string. Concatenate is where we are trying to add two bits of words together, two words together, two strings. Um, for plus operator, it can be both addition and also concatenation depending on the data types. Here we have an issue with the data types and the issue is for all inputs from the user are strings by default. All inputs are treated as text even if they have a number in. So hopefully the user is going to enter a number like 25 but 25 to a computer when it's input is treating that like text and not a number. And so in line 7 it's getting confused. It can't add 10 as an integer to uh, 25 as a string. So we need to make sure we cast this value into an integer. Cast it from a string into an integer. This means converting it really and the way we do this is by wrapping a function around our value. So I can just add a reference to int into the built-in function to convert from another data type into an integer and I make sure I add these brackets either side of my other one so then we end up with two brackets on the end here if I just shift this along. So it can get a little bit confusing, uh, but now we should be able to run this without issues. I could just type in OK here. Uh, it was your age 25, and we should get uh, 35 printed out to the user. Maybe I should delete these criteria as we go, because we can also maybe add a comment on at this stage to be able to, uh, to get rid of that one. So a comment, like I said before, you can do this multi-line comment with triple quotes, but you can also just do a single line comment with a hash tag symbol, or just a hash symbol. Uh, as it's probably properly called. And so now we can maybe explain what's going on in line 7. This might be quite useful if you're sharing your code and someone is a bit confused by what's going on. We could say uh, by default all inputs are strings but we want age to be treated as an integer. So we cast it. You could say that, right? Uh, quite a long line but that will do. Uh, so we can get rid of that criteria too. Criterion I should say. Um, so let's try and just use, we have used one arithmetic operation, but let's use one of uh, the slightly more slightly more tricky ones, in they're trickier to understand what's going on. So we could do something like was in the example, so we pose a question to the user. Let's do this in a print statement, why not? Could do what is, let's do 27 mod 4. And we could have a variable called answer, and we just get the user, don't need to put anything in here to answer this for us. And again, we want this to be treated as a number. Well, actually here, it doesn't matter so much because we're not going to be able to actually see if it's correct yet. We'll need to learn about if statements first. Uh, but then we can sort of uh, take this answer and compare it to the correct answer. So we can get the computer to work out what the value is here. So if I do something like the correct answer is, and then like in line eight, follow this with a comma, and get it to work out what the answer is. So here we're going to do 27 and the symbol, the operator for modular division in Python is for percent sign and then it was mod 4 like that. What the mod operator does is find the remainder in some division. So the division here is 27 divided by 4. How many times is 4 going to 27? Well it goes in 6 whole times because 6 times 4 is 24. 7 times 4 is 28, which is above 27, and so it doesn't go in completely. We have some remainder, and so it's not going to be 0 here. Uh, but here, the remainder is the result from 27 mod 4 should be 3, because we have 4 going in 27, it goes in 6 odd times, remainder 3, and that is for what uh, mod returns. So we should get 3 printed out here if we try this, maybe. Uh, and it's fingers crossed this works. Could do all of this again. What's 27 mod 4? Let's just say this is 5. Uh, correct answer 3. So there's not really interactivity. We could add in a bit further along something like, a bit like in my example, we could say, uh, you said, uh, what did they say? Well, we can use the answer variable to compare it. Like I say, if we want to actually make it more like a quiz and actually properly uh, compare the proper answer to their answer, we can, uh, we need to use something like if statements to actually do that comparison, which will be covered in the next few tutorial videos. Okay, so this is not a, a particularly uh, lovely program uh, in terms of, um, well, I mean, it's a start, right? And the whole point is to practice the basic skills and we can work away. You'll see if you try this and play around with it, there'll be certain issues. So for example here, hello, how are you? Could say, 
I don't, know, it's, I don't know why I'm saying hi, but that's fine. I uh, could do in, in, here where we're wanting it to be a whole number. We're trying to cast it to a whole number. If I don't type in a high, if I type in high again, I type in a string. It's now trying to convert a word into an integer, and it can't do it, and so we get an error. So, in future videos, quite a few videos, time actually, we'll, we'll figure out ways we can avoid this. You can avoid this with loops, but also with something called exception handling. And so there are some issues with our code already. Also, it's a bit inconsistent, right? I mean, sometimes I'm going onto a new line when I'm doing my answers. So I could say I'm OK. And sometimes I'm being asked on the same line. And this is because I'm sometimes using print and sometimes using just input to sort of ask for stuff to the user. Print, every time you use print, it goes onto a new line unless you add in, uh, unless you change that. So it's a bit bit messy here. You might want to add in a space when we use input because otherwise our prompt goes right after our question and it looks a bit messy. It's nice to add a space, I, I think personally. So there is some work we can do and of course in future videos we can make this code a lot more complex. So if you would like to see this code and uh, have a look at it, there'll be a link in the description. Please don't sell it. I'm sure it's worth lots of money. And also please ask any questions in the comment section as well.